Okay, buddy. That slate tone means that it is 420. How you doing? Oh, what a great time to start this. Fantastic. How are you, Jason? It's been a minute. Yeah, it's been more than a minute. Uh, we're basically testing... Several minutes. It's okay. I'll get it all figured out. Uh, we're dusting off this gear because I am going to record a ladies' podcast tomorrow and uh, tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. Uh, who, this lady does a food podcast. So I said, Sam, you got to come over and we got to make sure all the stuff works so I can... Uh, Go record this lady's podcast. Why don't you make a fucking podcast about why you haven't been making any podcasts? What a great idea, Jason. Of course. The ideas just pour out of your head. I don't know where you think of this stuff. Just They just come to you. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I am going to make some quick adjustments while you're talking, so go ahead. Okay. Would you like the manual? No, I think I got it. All right. What are you, burping? And you don't want it to go in the mic? You don't know how to make good radio, dude. That's how you make it. Just burp on that fucking mic. That's how you do it. <laughs> Everything they taught you at broadcast school, you know, like don't, like, don't clear your throat on the air. Don't, uh... <clears throat> yeah, let, let it rip. People have snot. They want to hear that you have snot, too. Mm-hmm. Right? So tell people why you haven't been making podcasts well, lately. Well, I, I went to Italy for uh, two weeks. That was awesome. Ate some Italian food. Went to the motherland. And, Where uh, all the other camaradas are from? Pelotons and I, me and Robert and uh, Ricky Stelma went through and played music on the plane at the Umbria Jazz Festival in Perugia and Bologna at someone's house. And did a gig in Rome at this brewery that's been open 400 years. Or oh my God. Like that. Eternal City Brewing Company. Brewing? Brewing. Killer Wings. At the Italian uh, brewery? Yeah. Okay. Good wings. I believe it. I, you know, every time I go to Italy, I, well, since the first time I went, I basically try to drop 10 pounds before I get on the plane because you do nothing but eat. Yeah, but every town is up a mountain. So you park below the mountain and you walk up. There's your workout. Yeah, that's a good, but that's surely not why you haven't been doing haircut talk show. No, well, um, you know... Uh, that I, was two weeks, I and mean, that sounds awesome. It was two weeks. I told everybody when I quit I was going on tour and was going to Italy and everything, but uh, I quit Aiden and Skill. Where we were doing the Haircut Where Talk we Show. we were doing Haircut Talk Show the last, the whole two seasons that we did. And um, it really was just a conflict of the seasons. We were doing Haircut Talk Show on Sundays. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Gill wanted to open up the shop for business on Sundays because he saw, I think it's my fault, because he saw I was willing to come in and cut hair uh, during that day. So then that totally made us not able to do Haircut Talk Show anymore. Yeah. At all. And it's because I couldn't cut hair outside of that place. Why Tell the people why you couldn't cut hair outside of work. Well, I signed a contract when I started working there that I wouldn't... Ooh, did you hear that? That, yes, I, oh. that uh, third mic really picks up the, uh, <laughs> the, room. the room. All right, go ahead. Uh, I signed a contract saying I wouldn't moonlight and cut hair outside of there when I first started working there not even your well, you, like these these barbers have kids don't they they don't get to cut their kids hair at home or i don't know you know i guess ladies are okay because women weren't allowed there that's another reason why i quit i have a lot of female friends that want me to cut their hair i can't i couldn't do it at work are you kidding i got a license to cut hair i can't cut my female friends at work i wonder if that's like a. how do you get away with I mean, not that any women want, even want to go in there once they find out that there's not a, a woman in there who can work on their hair. any business has the right to refuse service to anyone, right? I, I hear that, but that's sort of, I don't know, yeah. Okay, I guess no one wants to go where they're not wanted anyway. I don't know. So it's not I like, know. do you turn women away? The reason I work there, yes, they would turn. I mean, sometimes women would come in and we would say, I'm sorry, it's a men's only thing. And they would say, not even a blowout? You can't even I give would, me a blowout? Oh, yeah, like, Definitely not that. I mean, we would.
would definitely not even blow dry. The only time I cut a woman's hair there was um, during a special event. Like some party was going on. I think Jim Beam or somebody, some whiskey event was going on. And I cut. That was the only people that wanted to get their hair cut there. No dudes wanted a haircut after hours during the event. It's only women. And they loved it. So it's like, I don't know why you'd miss out on that money. It, there, it is half the population. More than half. So that is silly but, to sort of like... You know, I could see just doing regular cuts, not blowing them out or styling and doing dye color jobs. or just, you know, you want a buzz cut or whatever, a fade or... Especially a woman who's a, comfortable... Just layers or a blunt cut or whatever, you know, you just got to book enough time for it. It's going to cost, you know, an hour. So it's $80 to do layers if you want to do an hour. There it is, you know? That's still Charge cheap. Them. I don't know what the deal is, you know, you just didn't... I don't know. He wanted a place where men could get away from their wives is what he told me, you know, no, the non competes up. <laughs> so, so that's why we're doing a, a talk show right yeah, now. We're doing it. Cause I, cause so you also signed a, in addition to no moonlighting, you signed a contract that said after you quit, after I quit or got fired, I couldn't cut hair inside Orleans parish anywhere for six months. Okay. At a place. I could go. That must sack Metairie so many people. Or New Orleans East, or not even New Orleans East, but New Orleans Parish. You know, so I could go to the West Bank. You know, um, but it's just so you don't steal their clients, and 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 that happened to them, so I understand why. So it's just time for me to go somewhere where I now know I can do a good job in the time required, and somewhere that's just. A lot more relaxed setting. Yeah. I mean, no bow ties at the new place? I can wear wherever I want if I want to wear a bow tie. Listen to you, tie. buddy. I could shave. I could not shave. It's a normal it's place. Should, I, should we say where I'm going to be working? Yeah, go ahead. Going to be cutting hair starting once a month in December at a factotum barber shop. Which right is next to Bud Ribs. Yeah, that's 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 its most prominent feature, if you ask me. Right next to uh, the old bar room there, Factotum Barbershop, Piety Street, right down in Bywater, New Orleans. Go and get a haircut or a shave, and get cleaned up for that special day. One time off for when I is was this in, a song? When I was in Waterworld. <laughs> Uh, the, the the aqua musical play <laughs> you wait. the okay. businesses in the bywater danielle the the producer of the show she went around to the businesses and got them to donate money for like an ad and i did an ad for factotum oh you like did years ago so it's um... i did a guitar song i just took fats dominoes i'm in love again you know burn out burn out and uh, you can see it on YouTube now if you look up Below Sea Level Productions. We should maybe try to include it in this yeah, little thing. Yeah, we can find it, yeah. <laughs> All right, so what have you been doing? Tell the people what you've been doing since you don't well, cut hair anymore. I work at my girlfriend's laundromat. Okay, so if you don't know, um, Sam's girlfriend, April, owns the Black and Gold. Black and Gold Wash and Fold. Wash and Fold. Okay, and where is that? 2529 Carondelet Street. Okay. And that's in, technically, it's in Central City, but I think of it as the Garden District because you can see St. Charles from the business. It's around the corner. But because of what side of the street it's on, it's Central City. I see. What do you do there? I am the launder attendant i fold underwear you it gets, do it gets pretty real yeah do you wash the underwear or you just fold it i wash dry and fold people's clothes so Sheets. if you i talked to april and she told me that she just got sick of doing it after so many years and she literally went and got another job when she owns she a laundromat another, yeah she got another job <laughs> and she calls me mr manager okay because well. i go and do the do the quarters and Deposit the bank accounts. Hey, I'm. I, that's good, dude. It sounds like it's working out. Yeah, it's great. I work alone. I kind of like working alone. And Jason likes working alone, too. That's why we're starting off slow. 
At the hair place. At the hair place, you know, just one day a month, you know, whoever wants to come in on that day to have me cut their hair. What day is it going to be? December 4th. All right, December 4th, folks. So get your... It's Wednesday. He's going to log me into the computer tonight. Should be live. Factotum website, barbershop. Yeah, you can go online and then uh, reserve a spot or you could text Sam or hit him up through his Instagram. He don't care. Yeah. He'll take on. any communication yeah, you give him. Any communicado. <laughs> He's not busy, and he wants but to talk to you. only one day a month, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Starting out. We'll see. You know, if my clients are cool enough, maybe he'll have me more than once a month. I say you don't bring in a bunch of musicians at first. Yeah. Well. Like with Gil. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the underwear. I'm fascinated yeah. by when people bring in their laundry, are there all sorts of skid marks and shit in their underpants? I don't examine it before I put it in the wash. But you've, you've seen. I know, it's silly to think that you haven't like looked in there. Sometimes the wash will come out and there will be like one time there was like... <laughs> come on, I can't believe you made me wait so long for this story. <laughs> You're going to love this one. One time I think there was some cat turds <laughs> in the wash. That they neglected to tell us about. Like, in, there was cat turds where? Like, in a blanket? Like, or? rolled up in a sheet or something. I have no idea. But, like, it was all in their clothes. <laughs> so, when I pulled the clothes out of the wash, the turds fell on the floor. They were know, put, and they had the been wash. liquefied? So, maybe? then I go through the clean clothes. And I'm, like, picking up the clothes to, like, shake out the turds that may still be in there. And I found more. And... I had to wash the clothes again. Well, first I had to wa run the machine, you know, with like a lot of bleach and vinegar and soap and stuff like empty, you know, and then sure. I washed their clothes again. And, you uh, give them a stern talking to? Oh, you did. You know, what did it say? Please, less dog shit next time. <laughs>